All right, here we are on episode four of the Maverick Mompreneur podcast. In today's show, we are going to be talking about the five part influencer formula. And when I say influencer, I don't mean uh, someone with perfect pictures and images on Instagram that does brand deals and all of the things, although this formula is exactly what they use as well. I mean having influence and being an influencer in whatever niche you are in. And it's really important that you build strategically so that you are not wasting your time when you're showing up online. Time is so precious and I want you to be building in a way that is going to get you results and that is going to move the needle on building your business and building your influence, your impact and your income. So let's get right into it. Today, I wanted to shout out one of my clients and friend, Sandra Hudson, and read you the review of the Influence Impact and Income Academy that she left. Sandra says, I cannot thank Ashley enough for creating the Influence Impact and Income Academy. I've spent a lot of money on courses and training in the past, but I've never learned so much in such a short period of time as I have from this academy. It's so worth the investment to take your business to the next level. Ashley is an amazing teacher and is so knowledgeable about the current trends that you need to be a successful online marketer. Not only is she great at teaching you these skills, but she also has the firsthand experience in implementing these strategies, which makes her a unique unicorn. Oh, thanks, Sandra. I don't know about that, but I love it. Since completing the Academy, I've grown my Facebook group by 200 members by implementing branding strategies I've learned from this course. I've grown my email marketing list by 50 subscribers, and I'm getting more page views on my blog each and every month. I owe all of my growth and success to Ashley, and I will forever be grateful. If you're looking to grow your influence, impact, and income, this is the Academy that you need to get you there. Well, thank you so much, Sandra. You are a total rock star. Sandra has her own, she actually has a coaching business in addition to a really kick butt social retail business as well with a makeup and skincare company. So Sandra, thank you so much. Appreciate you. And I hope you are listening and enjoy the next episode. Hey mama, I'm Ashley, and this is the Maverick Mompreneur podcast, where you're free and encouraged to own your desire to create and scale an impactful, discoverable online brand and business in the midst of motherhood, a business that's aligned with your mission, lifestyle desires, personality, and zone of genius without wasting your time on the hustle and grind hamster wheel that is social media. Can I get an amen? Sis, you are a maverick, an original, willing to stand out in your authenticity, defy expectations, and do life and business outside the box. In our world, if it's not aligned with who we are, it's a hard pass or a brave pivot. So if you're here for the powerful identity shift and transformation from boss babe or boss mom to aligned CEO, building a one of a kind, influential, hustle-free online business that will produce long-term impact and multiple streams of income through SEO, affiliate marketing and courses while building yourself in the process, well, pop in those AirPods, grab that cup of coffee or glass of wine and let's get growing. Hello, hello, Ashley here, and we are back for another episode of the Maverick Mompreneur podcast, and today we are going to be talking about what it takes to be an influencer. So five simple components to being an influencer. No matter what industry you're in, becoming influential is definitely a huge part of your bottom line, and it's also a huge part of the impact that you will make. So I'm going to give you a five-part formula to become an influencer. Number one, define your brand. So a lot of times you'll hear people ask, well, do you need to have a brand to be successful? Yes. In 2021, going into 2022 and beyond, you absolutely have to have a standout brand. There are lots of other people doing exactly what you're doing and selling what you're selling, but what's going to make you stand out is your strong personal brand. So you want to define your brand. What are the two to three things that you are going to be known for. The more niched down, the better. Or is it niche down? I never really know. What is it that you are going to be known for in the online space? And the more narrow focus you can get, the more people know what to expect when you show up online, wherever you are building your audience. So defining your brand. 
I have a course, which I will link for you below. If you are really interested in refining or defining your brand and really making sure it's in alignment with your personality, your skill set, your experiences, how you want to monetize all of those things, definitely check that out. It'll be in the show notes, but that is the first component is really defining your brand. How are you going to stand out? If you have a strong personal brand and you do these other four things, then you will be able to sell anything online. The second piece is to build and market to a target audience. I know when I first got into the industry of network marketing, I was told to get 5,000 friends on Facebook as quickly as possible and just friend the randoms and just do it, do your DMO. Well, That isn't so much a great strategy because first of all, not many people are seeing your content of those 5,000. It's something like 10%, but even less than 10% actually need what it is you're offering, right? So if you build and market to a target audience who are the exact people, the exact person, your ideal client avatar who needs exactly what you're offering, you're going to have much higher conversions. So number two, build and market to a target audience. And there's lots of ways to do that. Anything from utilizing hashtags on Instagram to running ads on Facebook. I know for for my brand group, my Facebook brand group, Elevate Academy, if you're not in there, that's always linked in the show notes. I used to build that organically, but then when I wanted to scale my business, I ran a targeted Facebook ad to draw in my exact ideal client avatar. And it's it's been amazing. I've met the most amazing women and have gained amazing clients through doing that. So there's all kinds of ways to build and market to a targeted audience, but it's essential if you want to be influential and you want to slay online sales. The third piece is to share things that you love, do, buy and use regularly with them. So especially if you are connected with a particular company or a particular product line, the more that you share other things that you find useful that you think will be super helpful for your target audience, the better. So this can include those products from a particular company because hopefully that product is in alignment with your brand. So if you're sharing them on your blog or your YouTube channel or social media or your podcast, you're sharing those things, but you're also sharing other things with your target audience that you actually use and love and think would serve them. Okay. First of all, that's going to be better for your energy because you're not just, you're not feeling salesy when it comes to one thing. You really make that connection between sales and service. If you really are devoted to serving your audience and you really do think you have a product that would be useful for them, it no longer feels salesy because you are sharing something that you know they're going to love. Your audience will also get used to you sharing and they're going to be waiting for the next thing that you share because they'll probably somewhere along the line have taken a recommendation for you from you, excuse me, and once they do that and they're able to trust that, wow, this person really does have my best interest in mind, they're going to be more likely to pay attention to other things that you're sharing and you will have more influence with your audience. So that's the third component. The fourth component of becoming an influencer is to engage with your audience and build relationships based on creating content that, again, you genuinely feel is going to enhance their lives. Okay. So you want to engage with your audience. I don't care what platform you're building on. You all know my preference being of course, uh, blogging and blogging slash website. And of course now this podcast. So you want to think about what is your ideal client, your ideal customer, your ideal business partner wanting to know more about what is it that they need to help them advance to their next level along their journey, whatever that journey is for them? What are those things that they could learn from you? What are things that you could learn and then regurgitate to them to be helpful? So you always want to be thinking about your followers, your audience, and what they need to hear on a particular day. This is really going to help build the, I'm sure you've heard, no like and trust factor with your audience, which is a huge part of having influence with your audience. I feel like I've said audience about 40 times. I want you to think about the people who, and I know many of the listeners of this podcast do have uh, social retail, social selling, network marketing, direct sales as a prong of their brand. You're working to incorporate it within your brand, but you are involved in the industry. So I want you to think about the top earners in your company. 
or someone who's recently come into your company and done really well, they're at the top of the company, what do they have? I guarantee you that they have influence. So they either have influence from within the industry. So say they've been in the industry for a while. They have a team. They're known for being a trainer. They've got influence there. And so they do well because they bring a lot of people over with them. They attract new people to them because people are curious about what this influencer in that industry is up to. So their target audience are social retailers, social sellers, right? Now, it could also be that the person who you're thinking of who has done very well has an audience that they have influence with in another category. So for example, if you're in a health and wellness company and you have someone who's brand new to the industry, but they have a huge following or an influence with a smaller following even, they are going to do really well because their audience really, they know, like, and trust them. And they have authority in that area because they've been creating content regularly around that subject matter. So when they go and share something that's in alignment with that, their audience trusts their recommendations. And there you go, slaying online sales. So it goes back to our first point, defining your brand, knowing what kind of content you are going to put out there and being regular with it. What is it that you want to be known for? What can people come to you for specifically? If you're all over the place, willy nilly, no one's going to, no one's going to know what it is that you are all about building and marketing to that target audience, sharing other things that you use by love and do within that range that they would be interested in. And then the fifth one is actually sort of a a piggyback off of the fourth, which is engaging with your audience and building relationships based on creating content for them, right? So what's in it for them? Always think about it that way. When you show up online, no matter where you are building your influence, your impact and your income, what is in it for your followers, okay? Now, if I just got on here, if I started a podcast and it was literally just the Ashley's Journal podcast and I was just talking about the things that I wanted to talk about, randomly spewing things not particularly related to mindset or marketing or SEO-based strategies, that wouldn't go anywhere because no one would know. I wouldn't have a target audience. I wouldn't be speaking to anyone in particular. I wouldn't be helping anyone in particular. It might be weird and interesting, but it definitely wouldn't be following this formula for creating influence. And it definitely wouldn't convert to sales. Definitely not. So number five is creating and publishing value-driven content regularly. Optimally, you know, I'm going to say it, optimally on a platform or at least repurposed to a platform that you own and or where you can at least be searched or Googled. So I don't want to see a bunch of one and done content on social media and nothing searchable to back it up. So you can do that in many different platforms. I, of course, love using a website. You can literally take some of these longer form uh, social media posts that you're creating and create a blog post where you can actually be found for exactly what your ideal client avatar, ideal customer, ideal business partner is searching for. And it's out there evergreen, forevermore circulating the internet. If you're curious about learning more about SEO, about learning more on how to create a marketing framework that will actually get you Googleable and off of that social media content creation hamster wheel. Of course, social media for sure serves its purpose. But for me, the purpose of social media is to get eyeballs and convert them into email list subscribers. What I teach in the Influence Impact and Income Academy, which is my signature course, it literally will walk you through the entire marketing framework that I have built out over the last four years of trial and error, but it is a six figure and beyond marketing framework. And I only work about 20 hours, sometimes a lot less than that. And sometimes more depending on what's going on. But I really, truly have a business that suits the ideal lifestyle that I want for myself. And, uh, most importantly for mom life. So that is the course for you. If you are really wanting to Take the down and dirty shortcut road to building something out for the long term where you can be searched and found. So I use this in all different sorts of ways. But for example, um, the 
social retail company that I partner with, they have one particular product that I absolutely love, but I also know that it's a highly searched uh, keyword. And so I have a couple of different funnels and I'm not going to give you all the details, but I have a couple of different funnels, one running through YouTube and one running through uh, one of my websites. And I have at least 20 new customers every single month come through just those funnels. And there's nothing that I do that's manual. There's no DMing. I don't post about products on my social media. And that is a great stream of affiliate income. So that's one way, but it goes beyond just the the income portion of it. On my original blog, Taylor Made Mama, I've had at least three people say that they found me, they found that blog as a new mom by searching, I don't want to return home after maternity leave and things like that. So not wanting to go back to work after maternity leave. And of course, I have an entire series of posts that aren't even really monetized. They're just me sharing my heart and journey and encouragement for other mamas in the same place. So I wrote the I wrote those posts now five years ago, but I still have the same, not the same, I still have created impact and know that I will continually do that because it's evergreen content. It wasn't just a social media post that I shared five years ago that no one will ever see again. It's still housed on a platform that I own and still creating uh, impact today. So you can imagine if you have monetized posts on your website, I also have posts from that from that website and my other websites that are monetized. And so those bring in income monthly as well. And I don't do anything. I created it once and then I was done. And this is what I want for everyone to have. So it doesn't matter whether you are in network marketing or you're not, or you're a coach or however it is that you're monetizing your personal brand, having a framework for your marketing that gets you off of the hamster wheel and gets you into the thick of Google and becoming searchable to Google is where it's at. So if that's of interest to you, make sure that you check out the link uh, to tons more information on exactly what is in that course. It is self-paced, but there's an option if you would like for, I think it's like $200 off. There's an option for one one one-on-one coaching session along with that. And you can schedule that at any time within a four month period. So check that out. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next episode. Until then, cheers to your impact.